Hello and welcome to episode 11 in this SQL for Data Analysis series where today we're going to be looking at stored procedures. We'll also look at basic procedures, how to modify and delete these, and then a stored procedure with um, parameters. And then we're going to look into viewing our stored procedures in the system catalog. So in this tutorial, I'm in the pubs database that we've used before. We imported this through a, a GitHub query. And we're going to use a table from there. Um, so first of all, we can look at the data we're using within authors. It is important to note a stored procedure is essentially just something that we can repeat, save and run over and over to make our life easier. And we're going to look at how we can do this within this tutorial. So here within the authors, we're going to actually go ahead now and look at the basic syntax of a stored procedure. It is important to know we're going to look at the state and the amount of contracts. And that's what we're going to use this first basic stored procedure for. So when you're creating a stored procedure, the basic syntax starts at create procedure. We need to give that instruction and then whatever you're going to name it. So I'm just going to call this contracts because that's what we're looking at. You can use create PROC, it's shorter, but sometimes I feel like when you're learning it, it's good to just be specific and outright state what we do. It makes collaboration better as well. Then we need to add the as keyword, which just separates the heading and the body of the stored procedure. And then here, you'll notice I'm going right to the end. We wrap um, the sort of commands in between begin and end. And that's our basic syntax for, for every store procedure. And then we can basically use those queries or actions in between that begin and end. I have stressed here, if we have one statement, the begin and end keywords are optional. However, I'm going to keep them again. It's the same as the, the longer keywords here. I'd rather have some clean code. So I just have a little indent. And now we're actually going to look at how we can create a reusable procedure. So I'm going to select the state column and I'm just gonna count contracts. So basically I want to see the amount of contracts by state. It could be an everyday task, or we could do this every every few months. So it's, it's reusable. I'm gonna call it, use an alias, number of contracts, that count of contract column. Remember, if you want to include spaces in your new column names, you can just use the, the square brackets. It's from authors. And I want to group this by the state so that I see the level of contracts by state, that granularity or aggregation. And I'm going to order it by the count of the contract. And I'm going to say um, in descending order from highest to lowest. So we have a normal SQL query. There's nothing um, extremely complex here. But when I click execute, it tells me that is now a stored procedure essentially. So when I refresh the object explorer, go into programmability and stored procedures, you can see it's there in contracts. So how do we actually call this and get the results? Well, we can use the execute keyword and the name of the stored procedure, and you'll see that appears in our results. So execute contracts. Again, I'm going to say here in the comments, you may see people just use EXEC. Again, you can do that, but again, we'll just focus on specificity and clean code. And I probably wouldn't change this anyway. I'd like to type it out in full so that I know when we work collaboratively, everyone's on the same page. So if you go to the Object Explorer, actually, right-click in your stored procedure itself, you can change it, you can modify it. So what I've done is I've actually just taken away descending so that the values show low to high in the default ascending order. So that's how easy it is to modify a stored procedure. Now, if I want to delete a stored procedure, um, we call it drop, I can just select type drop procedure and the name. And there we go. If we go back into our Object Explorer, programmability, it's now gone. So let's look at how we can create a stored procedure with a parameter. So let's make this dynamic. And you'll see an issue here. When I select the details from titles, select everything, you'll see the year to date sales column has a nulls. So I can actually say just in this basic query where year to date sales is not null. So I want to filter those out and we're going to carry that through to our stored procedure with that user input, that parameter. So we make this even more valuable. And this is where stored procedures sort of kick up a gear. So again, basic syntax, I want to create a procedure and I'm going to call it um, title sales. So sales of the year to date sales of a title. Um, but here 
I'm going to use at, and I'm going to call this minimum year to date, to date sales is what we're going to use as our parameter. And it's an in, it's a whole number. So you give the data type as well. I say as and begin, we've looked at that before. And I'll go in and do what we want to do with this query. So select, I want to select the title, the price, the advance, because that may be important to year to date sales. We might want to draw a correlation later um, from the titles. So it's from within the, the titles table. But here I'm going to list two conditions. So I want where the year to date sales is greater than or equal to the parameter that the user enters at the very start. So you see that at min underscore y, ytd underscore sales. And remember what we said, I want to ensure that the year to date sales is not null. I don't want any null values, let's say in this case, I don't trust that data, that underlying data. There may be issues at source, so I'll leave that out. And then I can say, I just want to order by the year to date sales in descending order um, and then end. And we're going to see how the user can enter a parameter and we can make this dynamic for, for everyone involved or for us if we're just analyzing different depths of data. So sticking to the syntax, but now we have that at value where the user can enter a parameter. We'll execute this and this will now become a stored procedure again within our object explorer. So how do we call this? How do we use this? How do we make this functional? Because obviously we've got this extra parameter. Well, now actually all we have to do is again, we can use the execute um, and we're going to execute title sales, the name of the store procedure. But you can see here at the end, I put my parameter. So I want sales greater than 1000 or equal to or greater. Now I put 10,000 and the data dynamically changes with that query. It's reusable. It's fast. So yeah, great use case. Now, if I want to view all the store procedures within our database or if I was in master within any database that I have access to or I've created, all I need to type is select schema name, schema ID. You can just use this verbatim as it is. And I'll indent that with name on the next line. And then we can just say from sys.procedures and where the type is equal to P because this will just return the sort of default stored procedures if you specify P. Um, and there we go. We can see all of the stored procedures we have and you can see our title sales. We won't see contracts because we deleted that and dropped it. So everything works well. Well, not a lot of time, but I hope a lot of great content. And as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.